Leonardo does wonderful things. Leonardo answers questions that are 100, 130 years old, namely, what did duckbills eat? Did their jaws full of tiny teeth actually grind up, chop up, produce a Cuisinart-like action on tough plants? The answer is yes. That's a fabulous answer. It's proof. Leonardo brings up lots of new questions we hadn't thought about. Leonardo lived in a crisis time when there was only one common plant eater, just one species. Leonardo species, why? What was wrong with the environment? What, what uh, catastrophe had happened? What crisis was going on? That we're trying to answer with looking at inside Leonardo and outside. The one glorious new thing from Leonardo the mummy is the GI track. You can take the incredible voyage from mouth to colon. We're going to do that right now. There's a bit of the beak actually preserved on Leonardo. The beak is an internal rim of bone and over it, what we have in the mummy, is bits and pieces of the horny beak. This is stuff like fingernail but much, much stronger. Tortoises have that and birds too. This is for chopping off mouths full of very, very hard vegetation. Okay, you're chopped. You're, we'll do it like a, you're a method a paleontologist. You want to be the food. You're the food. You get chopped. Then the food is passed here. And Leonardo the mummy has a wonderful set of molars, beautifully preserved, every single one. There's about uh, 800 of them packed in here, packed very tightly. And when one tooth wears out, another one's coming in, never runs out of teeth. This is a cranial cuisinart. This chops and shreds and grinds. And we knew about this part before the discovery of Leonardo, what we didn't know is what happens afterwards. Okay, you're the plants, you've been chopped and shredded. You go here into the gullet, and Leonardo the mummy preserves the gullet, what appears to be an enlarged crop-like device. Birds have crops. You would be stored, you the chew food would be stored here. Now you're passed down, 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 and here the magic begins. Leonardo is the very first dinosaur of any sort to have the chewed food preserved in the stomach. It's fabulous. We had theorized for a hundred years that duckbill dinosaurs with their wonderful motors would chop, 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 shred, shred, shred. We had no proof. How could you test that idea? Leonardo tests it. You can actually look through the ribs and see the stomach contents and it is full of chopped and shredded and otherwise mashed vegetable parts. And those vegetable parts are from tough plants, conifer needles bits of conifer bark, twigs, all right? Here, keep on going, keep on going. We have another window into the GI tract right here in our mummy. Here are the bits and pieces of chopped vegetation are more dissolved. They've been worked on by the digestive juices. Now, duckbills, like all big herbivores, have lots of volume in the intestines because you need to work on this stuff, plant stuff, plant fiber. It's tough to digest. You need protozoans, bacteria, and other microbes to live inside in vats to ferment the food. And you can see that process from stomach to intestines. But wait this more. In all duckbills, especially in brachies, the intestines doesn't stop here. This is where it should stop anatomically. It stops at the hip joint. That's where it stops in us, not in duckbill dinosaurs. The fermentation vats continue in between the legs. They're continuing, continuing, continuing. To, this is what we call the afterburner. Extra compartments for digestion all the way back here. And finally, at long last, the end of the trail for you, the food. Now you've been chopped and smashed and fermented and acid dipped and all the goodies have been extracted from you. And finally, you're bundled up into a little package and pooped out. That's the end of your incredible voyage. <laughs>